Growing up as a young man, I was obsessed with wrestling. And I always dreamed of growing up to become a wrestler. Now, even though that was simply a childhood desire, my walk with God has led me to many wrestling matches. I've wrestled in private. I've wrestled behind closed doors. I've wrestled with controlling my emotions. I've wrestled with the mistakes of the past. I've even had wrestling matches between my body and my heart. Occasions where I know I should pray. I wanted to pray, but my physical body was too tired, too distracted, and prayer became a fight. And isn't it true that we all, to some degree, are wrestling with something? Private, unseen, and sometimes internal matches. And the toughest thing about a wrestling match is that sometimes you can feel like you're, you're fighting on your own. Like there's no one in your corner, no one you can lean on, no one there for support. And I remember a time when I felt like that. Felt like I was fighting a losing battle. The same old sinful cycle would spin me in a whirlwind again and again. And I felt alone. Now, just as I was at the tipping point of giving up, that's when I had my first encounter with the Holy Spirit as my helper. And I often think about the story in John 16 when Jesus was coming towards the end of his ministry on earth and he gathered his disciples around and tells them that it's better if I leave this earth. It's better for you if I go. And I imagine being a disciple. You have walked with Jesus. You have seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. You have seen him heal blind Bartimaeus. You were there when your boat was shaking in a storm in the middle of the sea, and you saw him speak to that storm, and it listened. Jesus, the one who hung on a cross, the one who was placed in a tomb but now risen, standing in front of you, is saying, it's better that I leave. In John 16, verse 7, he says, It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. The Helper is the Holy Spirit. Do you know who the Holy Spirit is? He is God's power. Without him, you cannot worship God in truth and in spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we couldn't win any souls because Luke 12, verse 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. It means the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom. He will whisper into your spiritual ears. He will come to your rescue. And that's when I started to realize that the Holy Spirit has been the missing link in my life. He was given to us as a permanent helper always on standby for you to call on him. When you need comfort, he is there as your comforter. When you need to be taught, he is there as your teacher. When you need direction, he will guide you. If you need strength, he is there as your source of strength. John 16 verse 7, if you need intercession, he is there to plead your case, to intercede or pray on your behalf. When you need counseling, he is ready with wise counsel and instruction. The role of the Holy Spirit in our lives is all-encompassing. And so those private wrestling matches that we all face, those are things, the moments that we need to invite the Holy Spirit into our corner. Invite him into your troubles. Nothing else should give you a sense of security but the fact that God's Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. I was reading the book of John and one verse literally jumped out at me. It became so magnified on the page and I knew, I knew it had to be God speaking. John 14 verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Now, if you know that the devil will send trouble your way in order to try and make you fall, you should take some measures to protect yourself from falling. Have
Having God's word in your heart is usually a good start. David said, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now let me ask you a question. How often do you pray for God's protection? How often do you turn to the word of God searching for a passage that reassures you about the protection you are offered as a believer? I have found that one of the golden rules of Christianity is that you should protect yourself at all times. And when I say protect yourself, I don't mean carry a weapon or take self-defense classes. I mean remain covered in the blood of Jesus. Remain covered in the Word of God. As believers, we need to remain under the supernatural protection of Jesus Christ because we are in a fight. I don't care how long you've been saved or whether or not you were raised in the church. It's a fight for some of us to make time for prayer every day. It's a fight to read the Word of God every day. It's a fight to be a doer of the Word and not just someone who hears the Word. It's a fight to walk by faith and not by sight. You and I are fighting against the many temptations of this world. We're fighting at times against our own flesh, our own bodies. And of course, we are fighting against the devil. And so, I would like to remind you to protect yourself at all times. Don't let your guard down. Now, I would like to give you some fighting words straight from the Bible. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 13 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. There would be no need for you and I to take up the whole armor of God if we weren't in a fight. It is the whole armor of God that helps us to fight all of the various evil entities from the kingdom of darkness. It's the whole armor of God that allows us to withstand the onslaught of the enemy in the evil day. Another passage of scripture is 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, which reads, Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Walking by faith requires you to fight. You're fighting what your natural eyes can see and trusting God's word. Now, as people of God, we need to keep standing firm through the many seasons of life. Ephesians 6 verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, in order to stand firm, you need the belt of truth to stand firm. You need the breastplate of righteousness. You need shoes prepared by the gospel of peace. You need the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. We can't always change our circumstances, but we can change our attitude and our outlook. We can choose to feed our spirit with God's word and reject the spirit of fear. So. Wherever you're at right now, you are not there by accident. God has placed you where you are. The fight you face, the battle you're in, it all has a purpose. In the fullness of His timing, the Lord will make a way for you. Let us pray. King Jesus, the Almighty One, teach us to be more trusting. Help us to build our faith. May the Holy Ghost teach us and remind us that the troubles we face serve a purpose. The pain that we feel, the people who reject us, can all be a blessing in disguise. The tough situations and trials we go through can be the Lord ordering our steps, positioning us for increase, for healing, for breakthrough. 
Now, as we continue to place our hope and faith in Jesus, we need to know that one day the storm will be over. You will make it through to the other side. God will make rivers flow in the desert. So, dear friend, whatever you are going through, it shall pass. Maybe you're in a dry season, a season where life seems meaningless and you feel as though you're simply drifting. Perhaps you're at a place where God seems as distant as the stars. Maybe you're in an impossible situation where no matter what you choose, you just can't win. For some of us, that tough place has become a stronghold of sin and you can't seem to let it go. No matter what your problem may be, it will pass and God will do a new thing in your life. Furthermore, all of us, despite what we face, we must keep moving forward in believing. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In other words, saints, press on. God is faithful to empower you to stand strong and victorious and not to be defeated. Remember that Jesus is victorious over Satan. He's victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And this is good news. This is good news for you and I because if we have accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts, then we too can walk in victory. When the bills are paid, when there's money in the bank, when there's plenty to laugh and be happy about, do you remember to say, thank you, Lord? I know where you've brought me from. I remember when it wasn't like this. Or how about when you're struggling? Work is tough. The business isn't performing well and you have problems. Do you remember to say, thank you? Thank you, Lord, because I may be hard pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. I may be perplexed, but I'm not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas didn't see the prison they were in. They didn't focus on the guards, the chains, or the fact that they were uncomfortable. They focused on God. Acts 16 verse 25 and 26 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. I pray that this may be the reality in our lives today. As we praise and thank God in advance, each of us will also experience a suddenly movement in our situation when things will turn around. Be thankful, saints. Be thankful always and in all circumstances. How could I not thank the Lord? How could you not thank the Lord? I am living, I am healthy, I am of a sound mind, I am blessed to have a family, blessed to have food on my plate and a place to stay. This is not to say that everything has been perfect, but the message I want to tell you is, be thankful. Find something, find one thing to be thankful about. We should be believers that rejoice and give thanks to God Almighty through the good and through the bad. Sure, the car broke down, but I thank you for legs that I can walk. Maybe I lost my job. It's a problem. 
but I can still thank God that I haven't lost my health. Yes, you may not be able to afford the most luxurious dining experience, but thank God that you have never missed a meal. People of God, we ought to have a spirit of thankfulness. Let it be your disposition in life to stop for a moment and say thank you. Psalms 107 verse 1 to 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. Today, if you're in a situation that seems hopeless, you don't have to despair. You don't have to lose heart because God has the power to grant you victory. Against all odds, dare to believe in Jesus. Think about David going up against Goliath. Goliath was nine feet tall. He was a giant an imposing figure, a strong and a skilled warrior. He had specialized armor and weapons. But David? David was just a shepherd boy. He had no prior training. He had no experience on the battlefield. Everything about him screamed average. By all measurements, David didn't stand a chance. But against all odds, David was able to overcome this impossible situation. By trusting in the Lord, David was able to overcome. He said to Goliath, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. It didn't matter how weak, how inexperienced, or how unprepared David was. He put his faith in God and God empowered him to defy all human logic. He empowered him to overcome a seemingly impossible situation. And here's the thing, if you believe, if you dare to let all of your faith rest completely on God's word, you too can experience the impossible becoming possible. We can and should be depending on God for that same miraculous power today. Against all odds, you can defeat your Goliath. Against all odds, you can overcome whatever trial, whatever difficulty you are facing right now. It doesn't matter how unworthy, how unqualified they say you are. It doesn't matter how undeserving they say you are. If God is for you, then no one can be against you. If God is for you, then goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. With Jesus on your side, you better believe he's going to march you to victory. He's going to raise up a standard in your life. And that's because everything about God is greater. It's greater than any opposition. It's greater than any amount of money. It's greater than anybody's opinion even. His promises are greater than the predictions of man. So when the world tells you that you've got no chance, or when the devil tells you to just give up, stand firm in your faith. Keep on pushing forward. Your ability to overcome hardship is not predetermined by a statistical analysis or a roll of the dice. Your future rests in the hands of God and he will equip you with whatever you need for the battle ahead. Because of the favor and providence of God, you can look at any situation and say, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I'm sure that each of us, when we've gone through certain things in life, when we face difficulties or challenges, if you're anything like me, then you will go through that situation trying to figure out how will this work for my good. When we are in trouble, how many of us want details from God? 
How many of us ask God, why am I going through this? How many of us ask God questions like, God, if you're going to make a way out for me, how exactly are you going to do it? At precisely what time will you come to my rescue? How long will I have to go through this before things actually start turning around for my good? But God doesn't always give us answers while we are in the fire. All we can do is have faith in his promises. Promises like those found in Nahum 1 verse 7, which says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. We ought to hold on to the promises like those found in Psalm 55 verse 22, which says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. You see, in times of difficulty, we have to remember God's nature, and his nature can be found in his word. In the Bible, God is described as a refuge and a deliverer. He is described as faithful. He is described as Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is patient, caring, and loving. And so, I encourage you to put your trust in the Lord regardless of what you are facing. Whether you are in a valley or on top of the mountain, we should be seeking the Lord always. We need Him to lead and guide us. We need His grace. We need His mercy. We need His protection to keep us safe as we go about our business. And above all, we need God's presence. You see, God's presence is extraordinary. When His presence surrounds you, you're surrounded by pure love. When His presence surrounds you, you're covered in safety and there is nothing from the enemy that can touch you. In His presence, there is power, so much power, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So much power that there is nothing impossible. It's only in the arms of the Lord that you can find divine strength. It's only in God that you will find strength in your weakness. It's only in Him that you can do all things because He strengthens you. This is why it's important that you obey Joshua 1 verse 8, which says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You must meditate on the Word so that you can keep your eyes on the Lord. When you have the Word hidden in your heart, you will always have a reason to say, It is well with me. If you're struggling and can't seem to find a way out of the mess you're in, fix your sight. Keep your eyes on Jesus and on His Word. Whether the economy is good or not, whether my friends are there or if they have abandoned me, your eyes are to always be on the word of the Lord.